In this video, we're going to be looking at making API calls directly from our Flutterflow applications. And we're going to do it by using the OpenAI Image Creation API. Okay, so I know this has been done before all over YouTube with um, the bigger Flutterflow YouTube channels. However, it was asked in the comments, so I thought I'd look at it and, um, and post something. So what we are doing we are going to use the open AI API and we're going to create an image and we can display it in this page. Basically we type in the prompt, click the button and we should get an image in the, um, in the, uh, in the image widget there. So if we go to API, so if you want to make an, create an API call, you have to click on the, that shape there, like the propeller, I suppose, the propeller shape. And when you open it, if you've got one set up, this is what you see. And when you create an API call, uh, you have to give it a name. And then you'll need to look at the API you're calling to get basically the rest of this information. Okay, so this is the open our documentations for creating an image. So our API endpoint is there. So that's what we put in our API URL. We have then we've got the content type, application JSON, and then the authorization, which is the bear and your open AI key. And then you've got the body, which is the model you want, your prompt, the amount of images you want to create, although it's always going to be N equals one with the DALI 3 model, because that's the way it does, you can't do any more. And this size of the image you uh, want to create. So when we are setting this up in Flutterflow, these are the options we've got. So so we've got our headers now to do this this will be blank when you create a new so if I just create an API call and this is what it looks like so you have to give it a name we're using post and we'll be putting in our API URL in there which is this and then your headers it gives you a hint there content type application JSON that one will definitely need and we'll have another one for the bearer which is the uh, API so that's how you create that section and that is essentially those those bits of information there so you will have to sign up for open AI to get an API key and if you're using DALI 3 you do have to pay it's four cents an image I think last time I checked so you just have to top that up a bit I think you can use uh, you get, do get some free credits whether you can use on the older models so you can do it for free I think for a while but um, if you want to use Dali through to the most up to date one then it's like four cents an image or something so just bear that in mind when you're signing up so obviously I don't have my API key in there I will put it back in there when we test it I've just removed it for now and then when we go to the body of the message you can see that I've got the model we're using we've got the prompt which I'm passing as a variable which I'll come to in a second we have got the amount of images which is the one which we know so we're going to get anyway the size and then the response format there's a couple of options you get you can have it as a URL which is what we're doing or you can have it as a b64 JSON but the URL is obviously just easy to display in our in our app which is why I'm doing like that so that's that now variables so again you just add a variable by clicking the button this is this section is blank when you uh, when you set it up and just add a variable and you get this as a blank line so I've put in the prompt which is what we're going to ask open to create for us is type string obviously and the default value give it a sad face image <laughs> of sad face emoji because if I get a sad face emoji, I know something's gone wrong. So, and it hasn't accepted the prompt uh, from Flutterflow. So that's why I've done like that. So that, that shouldn't be used. That's not what we're looking for. And you can add your headers as a variable if you want to. So you can add a variable, have your API key in here as a variable rather than having it in here. So, that's that and then in the advanced settings down here now make private 
This only works if you're using Firebase. So it will create Google Cloud functions for this, which is why mainly why when I do these things, I actually just do it in Superbase anyway. I don't use this at all, to be honest with you. I just use Superbase. And then you've got proxy URLs to avoid cause issues when testing. So um, you will probably run into cause issues with this as well when you're running it in uh, in production rather than as a test. So that's some stuff to bear in mind. So that with that being said, um, when we go onto this page, so that's how you set the definition. If you go into this page, which is the response and test, you just need to make sure that you you're including your prompt there your variables so in the body if I untick that you get the default variable in there which you don't want you want that unticked so it's including whatever information you're passing in and then down here I've just switched off the parser data types because I'm actually doing that I'm only creating a JSON path for the uh, URL so what we do if you run a test response so in actual fact if we untick that so we have got a value and if I paste my API keys back in there we can go and test it okay so I have paste my API keys back in and we've got uh, that's what we're going to create an image of a sad face emoji and what we're going to do is test the API call to make sure that it functions so she'll get a and then that'll be the response there and that is how once you've done the response then you can map the JSON path to one of the values in the in the response and obviously we're using the URL for the image so if we do a test so status 200 is success and we have got a an image so it's meant four cents create an image that we don't need and essentially the url is what we map to this json path so down here when you get you'll get some recommended down here but if you add json path and basically for the url what i've got there you see the dollar dot data colon dot url which pulls the URL from here so if you wanted to for instance pull the revised prompt which is the next one up that's how you would create the, um, the JSON path like that and then you just click on the add JSON path it add it to there and then the just the plain dollar sign maps the entire JSON object to that so we do not need that and that's how you create the JSON path and that's what we're using in our Flutterflow app so if I click back to include that and make sure we save the changes I don't think I've broken anything right so if we head into this page so all we've got is a text field which we're going to write our prompt in and then we've got a button um, well an icon in actual fact we're using as a button so we can, um, it's got some actions on which we're going to look at in a second. And then we've got an image, an image object. So on the icon, if we open the editor, the first thing we're doing is setting a page state called AI prompt. And we're setting the value as the text field. So because whenever I've tried to do this and pass in the text field directly into the the variable in the open AI prompt it's failed as it's failed it doesn't recognize it so if you create it as a page date AI prompt set the value as your text field do that first and then when you're making your backend call so it's back and call API obviously the open AI API is what we are calling and then our prompt, what we're passing in, which is the variable in the body, remember, which is what's going to tell us what the image we want, 
and it is the value is our page state ii prompt which we have set in the previous section and then we've got a conditional action beyond that essentially our action output was the api call successful true or false that's what we're doing there so that will be in the action outputs api response succeeded that's basically what we've done there and then that's true or false and if it's false oh it failed i've just got a message saying just we're clearing the text field first off and then we've got an alert dog saying error and then if it's successful we are clearing the text fields anyway obviously because it's just good practice to do so and we're updating the page state we are setting we've got an image url page date which is a image path type and we're setting the value as so in here right so i'll actually go back over that very quickly again because that may have jumped ahead a bit there we've got an image url page date there which is an image path and if you remember we mapped the json body in the api call and this is where we're using it so the value we are setting for our image url is so it is basically action output open eye response this json body json path that is the json path that you have created in your api re, your api response and that's that so and that's how we do it and then obviously it should just rebuild the page and put the image in the image object so so we know the api works we've tested it so we've got to now test it and see if this section works which i've got to be honest i haven't actually done so we're going to test mode okay so when i loaded this up i actually had one of those null errors that you get with a giant red screen and what it was the image network image path i didn't have a default variable so i've pulled a um just reference day image from the rapid mvp wordpress site basically so that solved that so let's try and see what happens Yeah, let's see what that happens so click on go it does take a few seconds for open AI to do its thing but I haven't had the error which is a good sign and there we go that is how you do it so that has that has worked so I don't use this I, I do everything via Superbase as you probably know already so with that said hopefully that helps uh, i think that's uh, pretty simple and straightforward to be honest so hopefully you can use that in your projects and please consider a like subscribe and i'll speak to you in the next video